What's a lichen type? I, I have no idea. I, I'm afraid to, to guess right this second. Because some are okay, but some are like murder scenes, so we'll, we'll have to find out. Yeah. Vlog three, welcome. Hopefully you watched the last couple. Um, this one will be good for investors. We're gonna talk about the Burr method of buying real estate. If you don't know what that is, it's buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. So we're gonna break that down for people today. Show them what it means, show them how to get some rental properties in the portfolio. The way why you vlog me, I think, it, I think there's one right here. I'm almost positive I've asked one coming in. I'm uh, trying to find coffee so I can get excited about vlogging in a few minutes. This whole coronavirus thing has completely screwed my timetables up. I used to being up early in the morning and now I just wake up when I wake up. It's super unhealthy for me <laughs> as a person because I need I need like a regimented schedule. I can't go to the gym, I'm not going to my office. It takes a lot to get me out of bed each day, right this second. I'm good. Can I get a large iced coffee? Uh, large iced coffee? Yeah, regular flavor is fine. I don't know if any if you if you're watching this and you actually know me, you understand that I'm the guy that will eat out like every day of every week, pretty much. Um, and it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, and, like, and I, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I, I like good food, so like that's I put it in my budget. Oh. Oh. Have a good one. You too. We met Jerry again. This is third two out of three vlogs where someone's called me Jerry. Welcome to my life. J-A-R-R-O-D-J-A-J-E-R-R-Y. J E R R I E. Jared. It's Jared. How hard is Jared? <laughs> Isn't that difficult? should open on Sunday with everything going on. Were they ever open on Sunday? Nope. Never. They never from the beginning. Yep. Man. Yes. All right, so we're at house number one. I wanted to do this vlog to show you guys what can be done with rentals and we get so many investment clients that reach out to us and they want to start a portfolio. Maybe they have nothing in their portfolio. Maybe they've just started buying rentals. Um, and they ask, what is the best way to go about doing this? What's the best plan? Most investors do one at a time and they save their money up for their 20% down and they put it down and they put their money in to renovate and they put a renter in and they call it a day. Uh, that's just the traditional method. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the easiest way to do it. But the problem is unless you just have unlimited capital lying around, you run out really fast. And then you're just saving up until you can go buy that next property. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you some houses. We've got about 30 houses in this one neighborhood that we own. Uh, and we're single-handedly turning them all over. When we bought these houses, some people were living here without running water. So they had no utilities. They were in just terrible condition and so we're trying to turn them over and give people a nice place to live and so far it's gone very well I think we've renovated <music> 16 or 17 now something like that this one is actually pretty far along. It may not look like it when we're standing in here, but uh, almost all the paint's done. They're still touching stuff up with the paint. Um, the floors need to get refinished, but this is one that was actually not in that bad of shape. Uh, again, we've got 30 to, well really there's about 40 in the neighborhood that we own in some capacity. 
Um, the one that we're going to go to next, I haven't been in yet either, so I'm not sure what condition they were in. But some of these things, the floors were sinking in, there was no utilities, um, some were just unlivable, but people were still living there. So. Like come in you can kind of see the wall condition pre-kitchen so this is how like this was the wall right a lot of it looked like this um, this floor has already looks like been partially pulled up but we'll end up putting tile down in the kitchen uh, we've been putting granite in all of the houses for everybody uh, brand new appliances for investors another thing people ask us all the time is um, what what do you like as far as rentals what should I be looking for uh, especially even people that may be living in a home and they think about uh, sell, not selling it but buying another house and then renting out their current house. Um, I love ranchers. Bonus points if it's a brick rancher. They're just not much to maintain. You're not having to deal with exterior siding maintenance. If you get vinyl windows and a brick rancher with a new roof, you almost have nothing to deal with. Um, especially in these where you have wood floors, when the tenants get out, you refinish the wood floors, you repaint, and you're done. Um, a lot of these other houses, whether they're cedar siding or masonite, or maybe it's a 2,000, 2,500 square foot house, it just, it's a lot to keep up with as the tenants turn over and get out. So uh, these are really prime. All right, so now we are at the second house that my property manager reached out to me on. Um, so this is the one I didn't know was available before we got out here, one of the other two. Um, our demo guys have already been in, that's why the dumpster's outside. Uh, we're gonna head inside now. The last one hadn't been touched at all. This one, uh, all the junk's been cleaned out of it and they've started kind of ripping stuff up. So you'll get to see kind of the bones of these houses as we come in. This one has been pretty much gutted at this point, so everything was cleaned out in the last couple days, they said. So you can see what these things are like. I mean, when you get houses where, I mean, tenants have been having leaks and they don't call, or the previous uh, person that's maintaining it isn't doing their job, um, what you get is these leaks in the crawl space that just go on for years. And then when you come in to refinish them, like, I don't know if you can get like a close up or a zoom in shot, but I mean, you can see not only is the subfloor gone, which is just the old boards that they used to do subfloor with. I mean, this is the same thing. You can see, I mean, we redo all the electrical, all the plumbing, the joists are gonna get redone. We'll essentially rip all of this stuff out. So it may look great when it's done. It may seem like, oh, it's not that bad. You come in and put some tile and some, you know, some, some toilets and vanities in, but the reality is that on a lot of these houses with how these people were living because of the previous management, I mean, really, we are tearing out everything. So, I mean, this is what years of leaks and um, just mismanagement does. So, like I said, all these joists, all of the subfloor, all of the piping, the electrical, everything's gonna get torn out. But hopefully in a few weeks, we'll have a nice rental property for somebody. All right, on to the next one. Each one of these houses, pretty much, they're getting vinyl siding. If there's any vinyl that's not brick, most of it's brick though. Um, new roofs. Uh, most of them didn't have HVAC units, so uh, new HVAC units and everything, ductwork and uh, full systems. Um, refinishing hardwoods, brand new kitchen, brand new baths, all new paint. So it's pretty much a brand new house once the people go to move in. All right, imagination time. So you kind of got to get rid of all these boxes, all the trash, the lumber. But imagine when these floors are all refinished, all the paint's touched up, you don't have bad drywall anywhere, um, new light fixtures. Yeah, this gives you a really good view of what it is before. You can see how the condition of all the plaster, all the walls, um, but we're coming in with new drywall all the way throughout. Um, 
new tile floors. Our last house is actually fully finished, so it's gonna be really exciting actually to get over there and show you what we can do once it's said and done. Um, Cause really, I mean, it's just a full transformation. Hold on, I wanna get a shot of my photographer's car and my car. And just for the record, he copied me. He always says he didn't copy me, but I had it first. I had the Stormtrooper look actually two cars ago. And then he comes in with this thing, tries to show me up. Now that's all I hear all the time about how everybody thinks his car is cool when we're together. And not mine. That's alright Mike, you can have your glory. This is what I gotta see. I think he's compensating for something. I know there's been a lot of talking in this vlog. I know that it's not as action packed as maybe some of the other videos we do, but we really wanted to do this as an avenue for investors to be able to look in and see some of the avenues that they could be using to build a portfolio in a smarter way. Uh, again, there's nothing wrong with the traditional ways you're doing it. We work with tons of investors that do it this way, but this is a way that can help maximize the building of a portfolio. And you don't have to do it with 30 houses. You could do it with just one at a time, and over a five or 10 year period, you could be sitting on an amazing rental portfolio. So hopefully this has been insightful. If we've missed questions and things like that, we'd love you to reach out so that we can continue the conversation. Uh, we do some classes on this, even with other real estate agents. Uh, so this is something that's constantly coming up, and we love to be uh, the informative party on these things. All right, so we're wrapping this thing up now. Hopefully you've gotten a pretty good picture of the neighborhood. As we're walking down the streets now, I think these are four that we own right here. Um, when we started this project, 30 to 40 houses in the neighborhood were just either unlivable, some were vacant, um, some didn't have utilities like we talked about before. But now, looking at the entire neighborhood, the values are up. Um, it's becoming just a really nice place to live. And that was our goal at the onset. Um, if you're looking to do something like this, maybe you're wondering how long does something like this take. Typically, we want to be in and out of a house within about 30 to 60 days. Because there's 30 in here, this is more of a year-long project. But just know that if you're doing one at a time, you can probably be in and out within about 60 to 90 days. Uh, if you need help with contractors, we can help. You're welcome to reach out to us and we can try to put you in contact with some people that could help you get started on your first project. But just know if you haven't started yet, it can be scary, but you're just, you have to start. Once you start, once you get past that first one, it becomes easier and easier. So hopefully this has been an informative vlog for you. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to us. If you've liked what you've seen, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast so you can keep up with our vlogs, our video tours, our podcast, and everything else we have going on at the Davis Group. We appreciate you watching and we appreciate your business. Why did you make us walk all the way down here when our cars are all the way back there? Mike, you're good sometimes. Sometimes I wonder, I wonder about you. Oh, man, walking has become so much harder since quarantine started.